What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the Vogue life, the art of doing nothing. Here on social media, we have a bunch of people. There are a bunch of YouTube channels. There's a bunch of Instagram channels. There's a bunch of TikTok channels. The children of affluence who just go out and buy Rolls Royces, Ferraris, they go to lunch. There's literally YouTube channels devoted to the offspring. Once again, the offspring, and this is really, really key. The offspring of rich men and women who just literally have access to a lot of money and all they do is shop, hang out, and talk about what they got. There's literally videos talking about $26,000 shopping haul, $36,000 shopping haul. And these people are living vicariously through the offspring of rich people. And there are many people that want that lifestyle where they are actually not doing anything. Not doing anything. They're just literally out here uh, They're just literally out here living life, not doing anything. And why do I keep saying the children of offspring? First of all, let's have this conversation. All right, shout out to all of the people who are leaving the well-constructed comments. Thank you guys, I really appreciate that. Um, I had someone leave a comment. Why do you rent versus buy? And clearly, there's a lot of new people here. Uh, when I was in the storage auction business, I didn't have one house, I owned two houses. So I've owned houses, but once again, for me, one of the reasons that I don't have a house is number one, I don't wanna be tied down to a piece of property. Number two, next time I buy a house, I'll be buying it for my family. Because here's the thing with me, and you can see it in the YouTube videos. I don't have stuff I don't need in my life. Like right now I have three cars, and as soon as spring comes, the convertible is gone. I operate very well with two cars, three cars, you know, because I gotta remember to drive this car or the battery's gonna go down. And one of the reasons that I have you know, um, I have principles that I buy my life by. Like the house, the last house I had, it was 5,000 square feet. It was just me. I didn't use the basement because I had stopped working out and I wasn't using the upstairs. So I got rid of the house because I wasn't using it. I wasn't using it. And there is assumptions made by people who don't have it about those who do have it. And you hear that, well, this is what rich people do. And this is a big category on YouTube talking about what rich people do by people who are not rich. I mean, when you really look at it from a logical perspective, when you really look at it from because I can actually look on YouTube and with a great deal of accuracy tell if someone has money. And most of the people on YouTube talking about millionaire game, wealth and all this other stuff, they don't have money. And once again, take, take this observation. Go to CNBC and see when they're interviewing all these people with money and look at the backdrops of these people's homes when they interview Kevin O'Leary, when they interview Ray Dalio, when they interview uh, Ackerman. Look at the backdrops of these people who are legitimately rich and compare and contrast this against the backdrop of all of these people on YouTube talking about millionaire game who don't have no money. They don't have no money. I lived in zip code 30327. Google the average price in that zip code. 
Wealthiest zip code in the southeast outside of two or three zip codes in Florida. So I have lived around wealthy people. I have seen what wealthy people do. I have seen how wealthy people get down. And there's none of this stuff on YouTube, but this is something else, once again, with a snapshot back to me. I don't really need a mansion. You know, at one point in my life, I thought, I'm gonna buy me a mansion. And then I really started to deconstruct why was I buying the mansion? Now, if I had a wife and two kids, I would get a big house again. It would make sense. But just for me, it doesn't make sense. Like, I had a situation right in here, and this is kind of weird, because I had a dining room table in the old house, and I brought the table and I took it into the office. Now, I'm thinking about reconfigurating my office and about selling that dining room table because it doesn't fit into here. I've been in here going on five months, and I'm still getting rid of stuff because one of my ethos is not to have things in my life that I don't need. That is one of my ethos. That is one of the things that um, I strongly believe in. And part of this, like if I buy another house, it will not be as big as the old house. It just wouldn't because I have no need for that space, even though I have the money. Let me say this again. I have no need for that much space, even though I have the money. And more importantly, I don't have the desire. I don't have the desire. That's just not in me. You know, I could be a billionaire and I'd probably be still living here. I know that blows people's minds because the first thing that comes to mind is if I had that money, I would be doing X, Y, Z, that's you. This is about me. And I was watching a video of a woman who was talking about she was happier in a two bedroom apartment because she's a millionaire. She's got a business. She lives in the mansion. She's got five cars. And once again, this old notion of having all these cars, you, you got to keep up with these cars. You, my insurance for the three cars is six fifty a month because they're all expensive cars. And um, when I get one, my insurance, when I get rid of the convertible, my, my insurance is probably gonna go down like 250. Um, but this woman, she's unhappy in the mansion. She's unhappy with money. She's unhappy. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why she's unhappy. She's alone. I put in the video not too recently to have money and to have freedom and have access and to be alone actually sucks. I look at these boss chick women who are so hard to get along with that they have made it where the only man that they can date is a man who is more has more money, is powerful, has his own thing. But guess what? A man like that is gonna date a regular woman because he don't wanna deal with the drama of dating a boss chick. I would never date a boss chick unless she and I just had, from a personality standpoint, we just got along really well. But typically, um, when a woman gets money and she doesn't need a man for money, her attitude changes and she ma it makes it so hard for her to get with a man because that need of security and money is gone. And one of the things that I see with this woman, cause she was talking about, you know, she was unhappy, she was depressed. She's alone. She's alone. That's like, I guarantee you, if she had a committed relationship and she had a man up there in that mansion, she'd be happy as she wanted to be. Cause see, the thing is, you ever notice like, if you're in a relationship with a girl and you break up and it's a really long-term relationship, the chick has to move. 
she has to get out of town because everything reminds her of the relationship. If this woman, and one of the things I'm seeing, and I, this, this is me coming across as elitist, is a lot of these boss chicks have tattoos, they have uh, these super weird nails. Uh, essentially, I'm gonna say it, they have no class. I was sitting back and I was thinking, of the women that I've dated, none of them had these funky design nails and weird weave and the tattoos. I'm not a fan of tattoos. I've dated a few women with tattoos, but that's not my first go-to move. It's not my first go-to move. But I was looking, this woman had weave, she had and tattoos. Uh, I think she has a fake booty. And I'm just looking at, she did all this stuff to herself because one of the things is to have money and to be alone is hell. Once again, I've talked about it on this channel before. I understood how I would change if I had a, because you know, one of the reasons I've had live-in girlfriends is I knew that if I did not keep that going on, I would lose my ability to pair bond. In the manosphere, pair bonding is usually dedicated to women who dated a lot of men and they, they can't pair bond. Guess what, homie? If you get used to being alone, practicing antisocial behavior, you can no longer pair bond. And this is one of the things, because right now we're having all these people who are living these Vogue Instagram life. They have the house, they have the cars, they have the jewelry, they have the purses, but they don't have happiness. They don't have internal happiness. They just don't. And once again, you know, I preach, you know, getting money, but one of the things I want to do is establish uh, corporate citizens, get you the 250, you know, so you can live a really good life. Because one of the things that I consistently see is what I call the thirst. And I've been fortunate enough that I started getting money where I did all the dumb stuff early. I did all of the dumb stuff, the crazy stuff, the stupid stuff, the tricking off. I did all that dumb stuff early. So when I got my, you know, to use that term, bag. So when I got my million dollar bag, I was able to hold on to that money because I had all that stuff out of my system. I'm a pretty regular, normal guy. And I could literally be sitting on a billion dollars and what you see in my life right now is not gonna change. That, that's the thing, I have reached my threshold. I have no need to, like, I don't go to Vegas, I'm not a gambler, I don't, I don't have a lot of high consumption habits. So literally, I could have a billion dollars and I would still be here because this is my threshold. I'm in a very nice place. I drive luxury cars. I eat out at restaurants where the bill's two to the 400 bucks routinely. My lifestyle would not change if I had more money. It just simply wouldn't because I have a firm understanding of who I am and to coin LL Cool J, I need love. I told you the story. I went back and just to be clear, there were many chicks that I had from a purely sexual standpoint that I was able to go back and reclaim and start fucking again. But this is someone that I wanted to have a relationship with and I had to go back, woo her, talk to her and bring her back into the fold because I understand the future. I am not gonna be this 65, 75 year old man up in the house by my damn self. That ain't happening. And this is one of the reasons that you're starting to see what I call a social media crack up. You have people who have the car, who have the house, who have the money, and they're clinically depressed because they don't have love. They don't have family. They don't have good relationships. 
Someone left a really good comment on my last video talking about the family was the nucleus of a nation. And this is why our nation is deteriorating because we don't have family. When I was growing up, we did not have homeless people in our neighborhood. If you remember when you're a child, if you're in your late 40s, early 50s, I want you to think, you remember homeless people being up in your neighborhood? Didn't happen. They had family. They had someone to take them in. See, the, a lot of people on social media are clinically depressed because they don't have love. They don't have good relationships. They don't have, they haven't done the work because once again, your body is really interesting. Like if you're, if your legs stop working, your muscles would atrophy because they're not using them. Your body works like that. So what you don't use, you lose. And I have not lost my ability to have a relationship because I kept practicing having relationships. I kept practicing having conversations. I kept practicing going on dates. I kept practicing like my girlfriend, she still comes over when she's on her period. I I'm gonna lay Paris. I'm gonna tell you one of the reasons I dated multiple women is so I could fuck for, you know, all four weeks of the month. Now I'm like, you know what? We just gonna have to take that L and just hold her and put the heating pad on her back for her cramps. See, you have to become what you want. If you want caring people in your life, you need to be a caring person. So I've noticed with, you know, she's my girlfriend, you know, she's my girlfriend. Um, I have noticed that she's open to a lot more things than she used to be. I have noticed that she is definitely on program for the long term. And one of the things you see with the Vogue life, you see it all the time. You see it all the time. They're spending money. They're in the mall doing this, all this stuff. And I'm going to tell you something from a person with money. Spending money on things that don't do not fulfill you. Like this is one of the reasons I can hold on to money. I just bought this new camera. I feel that this was a good purchase for YouTube and it was a business purchase. And I got a new drone because I just realized my my first drone is like seven years old and the newer drones have better technology. But I don't go out and randomly or aimlessly just purchase things just to purchase things. You want to know what happens when I purchase something that doesn't fit into my grand schematic? I end up getting rid of it very quickly. I actually bought some stuff online and once again, I bought two X, but the two X's are small. So I had to buy three X's and guess what? I'm donating that stuff to Goodwill. I'm not even sending it back for a refund. What I do is process what comes into my life and I, I, I process it on a judicious manner. This is why I have 30 year long friendships. This is why I have what I have. And with this, like I'm telling you, a lot of people on social media are clinically depressed because they're out like, I was watching this video and this girl was talking about she was happier being in a two bedroom in apartment. And I feel that she's clinically depressed because Here's the thing, money without purpose is hell. If you just have a bunch of money, you don't have a purpose. Like I want you to think about, it. you ever walk around your city and see a park or you see a statue and at the bottom of the statue is a plaque who donated it. It was people with money and purposes that built your city. You know that um, children's theater? There was some rich person with purpose. It's like, we're gonna leave money to entertain children for decades. We're going to leave money to create these plays and these wonderful experiences. When I was in elementary school, 
every year we used to go to the children's theater and watch these beautiful plays. It was some of the fondest memories of being in school. Some rich person with a purpose gifted us that experience. Y'all don't hear me because everybody's like trying to secure the bag so they can go out and buy a Hellcat or buy a Ferrari or buy a Lamborghini. Now I will say I'm somewhat of a car guy. If you buy the right car, it is a thrill and it will produce happiness. So that I do understand. However, if that car is taking all of your money, that's not a good look. It's just not a good look. But right now we have a lot of people, like there's many shows on um, Netflix, like Selling Sunset. And the show has all of these beautiful women who are really in shape, who wear high heels and prance around in dresses. And the whole show is about these women going in the office, having conversation, going to junk, going to, to uh, lunch, going to parties. And they never show them actually working. They may show them showing the client something, which because of the, the glamour and glitz of the show doesn't really seem like work. And this is what a lot of people aspire to, to have a life where you could go shopping, go to lunch, hang out, and don't have to work. And I'm about to say something. If you don't have a rich daddy, it ain't gonna never happen. It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. You're gonna need a rich daddy for that to happen. You're gonna need a rich daddy. You're gonna need a rich daddy. And this is one of the things because I study wealth literally around the world, there's about 30,000 people who would I classify as ultra rich. 30,000, which is a lot of people from a pure numerical standpoint. But when you compare and contrast that 30,000 against the 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet, it's literally, a, it ain't the top 1%, it's the top 0.2 per, top one, it's the 0.1% of people who have access, who have wealth like that. And one of the things that happens is when you get older, you just don't require as much as when you were younger because you've gone through your bullshit phase like I said, I have been rich long enough where I've got all the foolishness out my system. I don't really do, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, Lay Paris, uh, this is something that I've never shared with y'all. I used to have a house and I had a, an apartment. I will never do that again. This apartment pretty much stayed empty because uh, essentially I had a house and I had the apartment so I can go out and do my thing and bring the chicks to the apartment and my girlfriend stayed in the house. So they never, these chicks never knew where I lived. They never knew where I lived. Most of them didn't even know I had a house. They didn't even know I had a house. They just knew I had a nicely appointed apartment. So I had a house in an apartment. Now, I actually got rid of the apartment uh, a few years ago. And one of the things that I may do with a family situation is have a house and have a beach house and take the kids to the beach. That's something I could see in the future. That's something I'm gonna do. Because essentially what I've done is take some steps back and I've created room and space in my life. Because this is one of the things, this is one of the reasons that these boss chicks, literally you're gonna start seeing these boss chicks crack up. You're gonna see them unhappy, these chicks have all this money, they have all this access, but they don't have good relationships. It all comes back down to having good relationships. It all comes back down to being a good, decent human person. And so many people are looking at the superficial aspects of this that they don't understand that money without purpose is death. Let me say this again, money without purpose is death. Money without purpose is death. Because what you will do to yourself is create a situation where you, where you're 
where you are just doing dumb stuff, where you are actually, because like I said, everyone wants to live that Instagram, YouTube, TikTok life of just going to lunch, not working, and always being in chill mode. That's not real life for 99% of the people on the planet. It's just not real life. There are TikTokers, there are YouTubers who have that life. I, if I wanted to, I could have that life. I don't want that life because you know what? That's kind of boring to me just to sit around and go to lunch all day and go shopping and that, that doesn't work for me. And if I wanted that life, I would have that life. The life that I have is a life of intent and design. See, money without purpose is death and you have a lot of people who are trying to get money like literally once again i said this before i'm gonna say it again you're gonna literally start seeing these boss chicks on instagram crack up because they're unhappy because they're clinically depressed and they don't understand because it's like i got this mansion i got the rolls royce you don't have no man see one of the things and you, if you understand the grand design, men and women were not put here on this planet to be alone. We were not put here to be alone. We were put here to be part of something, to be with each other, to build families. That is the biological imperative. And a lot of people are circumventing their biological imperative and they're wondering why they're getting sick and why they're having um, health issues and why they're freaking out and why they're mentally because they don't have healthy relationships they don't have healthy relationships they don't have anyone to talk to they don't have anyone that they actually trust they don't have anyone to build anything with but they want that vogue life which is a facade which is a facade because one of the things that you have to understand you have to understand that we need people. Like I said, I've said it on this channel more than once, I've said it a few times. One of the reasons I keep girlfriends is I didn't want to lose my ability to have relationships. You have a lot of men who don't have the ability to have a relationship. A lot of women, a lot of men and women, they don't have the, the ability to have a relationship because they're too opinionated they're too selfish and they want everything their way like another reason i got rid of the house i meet my wife we can go shopping for a house and we can get a house that we both like versus her coming into a situation because um i fucked a lot of chicks in that house fucked a lot of women in that house and our house she'll be the only one to be getting fucked up in that house She'll be the only one. And she'll have that knowledge and she'll have that comfort. She'll be the only one. She will be the only one. And I can say that our, you know, to you guys because right now, social media is just gonna grow. It's not gonna go away. Social media is gonna grow. And if you position yourself correctly, you can make a lot of money with social media. But you're gonna have to have talent, you're gonna have to plan, you're gonna have to have drive and you're gonna to have to have a schematic. You're gonna to have to have a schematic because just going on social media and like there, there's, there's a group, like I, I can tell you social media money can be sick. It can really, really be sick. However, you got to have the proper setup. You gotta have the proper situation because if you don't have the proper situation, um, it ain't gonna happen. It's just not going to happen. And one of the things that you have to understand is your money needs to have intentionality because like I said, I could be a billionaire. And once again, I did a video on Hustlers Come Fu. I will never be a billionaire, but my life would not change. Cause like I said, I reached my threshold. I do what I want. I eat what I want. I live where I want. I drive what I want. I have reached my threshold. So more money is, you know, one of the things you have to understand, and it goes back to why people don't have money. People have false assumptions about people with money 
and they have because they, they really don't know about people with money. I got a friend who has a job. He makes about three million a year and he has a substantial real estate portfolio and the house he lives in. You would not think he's worth that kind of money, but he likes the house and the woman he's dating. She's very nice. She's sweet and a lot of people wouldn't like her because, you know, the kind of money he makes, the kind of situation he has. But they're very happy together because her personality and his personality meshes very well. So one of the things that so many people who don't have money and who are in that thirst, who are looking to have that thirst, they're looking to have that lifestyle, looking to be that person. And you have a lot of charlatans here on YouTube who are trying to enable that perception that are enabling that. Cause like I said, having money without a plan or a purpose and intentionality is hell. Having money just to have money is hell. And this is like this woman, I watched it cause she was talking about how she was happier in the two bedroom apartment. Because see, here's something else too, and this is something that women don't understand. When women get money, the more woman, the more money a woman gets, she drastically reduces her dating pool. These women are undateable because they got all this money, they have all this freedom, they have all this access. And a lot of them honestly aren't not, are not that nice. I have dated. And I'm about to say something that's going to piss people off, but I'm going to say it. I have dated white millionaire women that were extremely submissive, that were extremely kind, that were extremely generous. I dated a woman that took me to Paris. She's like, hey, you want to go to Paris? I was like, sure, we can do that. She says, when can you be off? I was like, I can go right now. Okay, I'll book the tickets. Took me to Paris, and every morning I woke up, she was sucking my dick. A lot of these boss chicks, they want you to suck their dick. They don't know how to be submissive women because once again, the more money that the average black woman gets, the more undateable she becomes because she's not nice. She's not submissive and she doesn't know her role as a woman. I know I pissed off a lot of people there because a lot of once again, I've seen this. I have dated rich white women. I've never dated a rich black woman. I don't know what that experience is like, but from what I have seen on social media, it ain't nothing pretty. It ain't nothing pretty because even though these women were millionaires, I was the man in the relationship. They were the woman and they understood their role. They played their role. They played their position. But a lot of these boss chicks, mm-mm. They're looking to have you be essentially a little fuck boy, a little toy to do everything that they want you to do. And for the average man who is heterosexual and aggressive and has some dominant traits, that just ain't gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Ain't gonna work. So if you're a woman who's a boss chick and you wanna have a relationship, you're gonna have to keep your submission or you're not gonna be happy. I know that sounded kind of crazy because um, I had a situation where I was dealing with someone who was evil and nasty. Well, I wasn't, it was part of a situation and this person was so evil and nasty that they died way earlier than life because they were evil and nasty and they could not have a man who was a man. They couldn't have it. So once again, you're going to see this happen all over social media. And like I said, once again, look at the people who have happy or what appears to be a happy relationship because we're on social media. We really don't know what kind of roles they're playing. And, uh, you know, I'm not showing my girlfriend on uh, the YouTubes. I'm not doing that because uh, she's very private. So we're not going to do that. And um, I'm going to hold off on the receipts and stuff because one of the things, like there's some of you who appreciate the receipts. They appreciated seeing proof of concept 
in proof of my work. I thank you guys. And then this got me a whole new level of hater. It got me folks who were harassing me, emailing me stuff, cause they, I made them feel less than. I, cause I'm, and this is one of the reasons that rich people cluster together so they can live their lives and they don't have to worry about, cause I just went out and bought me a, a Rolls Royce and you can only afford a Pinto. I'm making you feel less than because you're broke. No other things. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, March is coming up. We're going to do some new training. I got some stuff to work on that I'll be putting out. But yeah, that Vogue life. Everybody wants that Vogue life, but that Vogue life is a facade. It is hollow. And no normal, productive person can just sit around and do nothing all day. You just can't. It's just not in you. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.